And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Now I'm using the term we're, even though I'm by myself in the studio. Okay, technically Rick's here. But other than that, Rick and I are not the we're. The we're that I'm talking about has to do with the gentleman that I interviewed on yesterday's show, Bob. Now, Bob's not in the studio. I don't, I don't have him on the phone. What I have are the rest of my show notes from yesterday's show because the reason I had these in front of me is there's a whole lot of information that Bob and I just didn't get to yesterday and and Bob's a busy guy he's he's a busy guy he's enjoying his life of retirement so he wasn't available to come on the show today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Bob and I'm going to talk about him in in a very very clear way and functional way. Does that make sense? Okay. The reason I want to bring up Bob again today, even though you already heard a good portion of his story yesterday, is that the first thing that I think that we didn't point out to you is that Bob is actually in his 70s. Now, he didn't sound like somebody who's in his 70s, did he? I mean, he sounded like somebody who's probably my age. I'm, I'm in my mid 50s, well, late 50s. But Bob is 73 years of age. He joined Lifestyles Unlimited at the age of 64. Yeah, yeah. You're going, what? 64? Yeah, exactly. So th the point I want to make, and this is the point I didn't make yesterday, is that even at the tender young age of 64, you too, if you're not happy with your retirement journey, if you're not happy with your retirement solution, if you're just thinking that that big bag of money that you've been trying to live off of isn't going to last you through your golden years, it's not too late to shift gears. I'm serious. It is not too late to shift gears. Now, let me get into some of the uh, salient information that we did not cover yesterday because I was having a great time with Bob. I, I was having a wonderful time with this guy. First of all, let me explain something to you about Bob that I didn't explain to you yesterday. He was one of the first people that I met when I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. I went to something called a case study. Bob was there. And during the case study, it's an opportunity for us to to mingle, to get to know other members. And I was I was a brand new member and I was trying to, you know, keep my head from spinning off because, you know, everything was coming at me new. And I actually had a very brief conversation with Bob. Now, at that time, we're talking five years ago, Bob had already been a member for about four years and, and Bob had already achieved success in real estate. You see, back in 2013, Bob at the age of 64 realized that what he was doing for retirement, it had a high probability of failing him in his older years because he started to realize that his life expectancy may have been longer. And I think Bob is already surprised that he's made it to 73. Now, I'm not picking on you, Bob. I'm just, first of all, congratulations for making it to 73. I remember when my dad turned 73, he wasn't as spry as you were. As a matter of fact, he was, he was pretty much confined to a wheelchair and he spent the next two years of his life in that wheelchair and using the little jazzy scooter thing. And that's, that's how he spent the rest of his life until he passed away. Now, Bob at the age of 73 is, is the antithesis of what my father was at the age of 73. Bob is full of energy. He's full of life. He's ambulatory. As a matter of fact, here's, here's, here's the crazy thing about Bob. When I first met the guy, okay. Now, when I first met him, this was five years ago. So he was like in his late sixties, right? And at that point I was in my early fifties. I really thought that Bob was a lot closer to my age than his actual age. Okay. That's, that's, that's the personality of Bob. And he doesn't come across as, as, okay, I'm going to say it, Bob. He doesn't come across as an old guy. 
He doesn't. He comes across as someone who is genuine and somebody who cares. And that is the person that I met five years ago at the case study. As a matter of fact, Bob and I had a, a very brief little conversation because I was trying to network. And I, I learned that Bob and his wife, Diane, had been investing in real estate. They had gone through what we call a full cycle. What does that mean? A full cycle is when you buy assets, you own and operate them, and then you get to a certain point in future time where you have an exit strategy. And then you execute that exit strategy and you leave that asset. And when you leave that asset, you get the benefits of all the returns that are locked up in that asset. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So he had gone through an entire cycle before I even became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. As a matter of fact, he was in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different deals. In other words, he owned and or operated six different apartment communities. And I'm going to explain to you how he did this. First of all, he decided that he would become a passive investor. What does that mean? It means that Bob decided he could get better returns on his money if he invested that money with his fellow Lifestyles Unlimited members. And that's what he did. He was very successful on two of his first three deals. You heard me correctly. Two of his first three deals. Now, let me, let me kind of break it down for you. That first property that he invested in, it was a 182-unit property. He, he bought into it in June of 2013, and they sold that asset about three years and two months after that. His return on investment when he purchased that property till when he sold it over that three-year, two-month period, was a 242.4% value increase. That's how much the property went up. So we're talking about Bob again all day today. Bob's not here because Bob is enjoying his retired life. But I'm here talking about him in his absence because there's a lot of information that needs to be shared with you. It really, I needed to do a two-hour radio show with Bob, and I only had an hour's worth. So we're going to pick up that second hour on today's show, and I'm going to share with you information that you can use. Absolutely great information. Now, as we went to the break, I made a little joke, and I said, uh, are you getting 76% returns in the stock market? And then I said something crass, and I said, like, well, okay, maybe if you're, unless you're shorting or not shorting, whatever I said. It, it, the, the point was I was trying to be humorous. Okay. And I, but as I sat through the commercial breaks, I started to realize something. I started to realize that even though I'm not invested in the stock market, you might be in the stock market. And what's going on in the stock market right now is not something that's making you feel very confident about your ability to retire. As a matter of fact, a lot of you have seen rates of return just dramatically declined because of what is going on in that stock market. I mean, if we go all the way back to what, uh, January of 2022, the stock market seemed to have been pretty healthy, right? I mean, it seemed to be doing great all the way through 2021. We got into 2022 and then all of a sudden things changed in our economy. The stock market, well, it, it went through what the stock people will tell you is a a correction. Okay. I, I prefer to call it a crash because I think that's exactly what's going on right now. The stock market fell for a while. It got to, I don't know, maybe about March. It tried to come back a little bit and then it fell even further. It tried to come back again, what, a couple, couple months ago, right? You remember that? It started moving back up. And then what did it do after that? Well, it's gone right back down to where it was at. If, if you are one of those people that evaluate stock charts. Okay. I used, I used to do that sort of stuff. I actually was, I went through the William O'Neill, uh, investing course to learn how to, uh, read stocks and everything. And I, and I made some money with it, but I, but I stopped doing it because I found that investing that way took up a lot of my time and I didn't have a lot of time to spend on my investing because I was on active duty with the military. I really need something that was a little bit more plug and play. But let me get back to my point. If you print out a picture 
of the stock market. Do, do like a, a, a weekly graph. In other words, have your graph set so that it shows you what the weekly uh, returns are for the stock market. When you print that out, what I want you to do is take a ruler and I want you to start at the highest point of the, the stock market where, where it got to its very highest point. Now, depending on what indices you're looking at, that might be right around the, the time frame of, say, I don't know, November or December of 2021. Then what I want you to do is I want you to kind of track all the high points as that stock market is going down in value. I want you to place a ruler against the, the three highest points, and I want you to draw a line from the left to the right, okay, so from the known to the unknown. Okay, and what you're going to find is that that line is going to represent what it's going to take for the market to get healthy. In other words, the market is going to have to blow through that line with very, very high volume in order to start signaling the fact that it's found bottom. I have not seen anything on any of the stock charts that I look at that tells me that any of these stock indices have reached a bottom. I, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Okay. Now I'm not, I don't claim to be the, the gift of, of stock trading. Okay. I, I don't claim to have that gift, but what I do understand is that the market is not very healthy and it's going to take a lot for that market to come back. Now you've, you've probably heard some conversations about the Fed indicating that maybe they are, they're going to raise interest rates again. Right. And we just had a, a jobs report that kind of is kind of is giving the indication that interest rates will go up again. And some of you are thinking, well, the right there, that's the reason why I shouldn't be in real estate investing because interest rates are so high. Okay. I, I understand what you're saying. What you're telling me is that the cost of money is, is going up. And therefore, if the cost of money is going up, I may not be able to afford that property. I agree. I do agree with you. But here's, here's what I think is, is going to ultimately happen, in, at least in the markets that I invest in. I'm not talking about the entire United States, okay? There, there are places in America that I will not invest, and I guarantee Bob will not invest in those places either. And, and I'm not going to get into the why. I'm just telling you there are places in the United States that make absolutely zero sense for investing in real estate. Now, there are a lot of places in the United States that makes total sense for investing in real estate. And those are the markets that I focus on. What, what I believe is going to happen, and this is, this is the conversation that we're having amongst all the people in Lifestyles Unlimited, is that we're, we're anticipating a softening of pricing in the market when it comes to the actual value of the property. I'm not talking about rents. I'm talking about the value of the property. See, because the, the interest rates costs are going up, we as investors have to take that into consideration. And as a result of that, we may not be able to pay top of market prices to buy an asset. And the other piece is this. The only people that could afford to pay top of market because they're not using leverage would be a cash buyer. Okay. Now, cash buyers, they're out there. Trust me, they are out there. But the majority of buyers in the marketplace tend to use leverage because the majority of sophisticated real estate investors understand that if you use all cash to buy your assets, then you have a lot of debt equity locked up in that asset. And as a result of having to put so much money into that asset, your actual rates of return are diminished. They're diminished because you have, you, it's, it's like, it's like feeding a furnace. You know, if, if you have to shove a whole bunch of coal in there just to get a little bit of heat, you're going to go through coal really fast, right? But if your furnace is, is more efficient, then you don't have to put as much coal in to get the same amount of heat. Yeah, I don't know if that analogy made any sense. It made sense in my mind before I started talking about it. Maybe it didn't make sense to you. Let's get back to Bob, okay? And one of the things I want to absolutely share with you is that Bob began his career in real estate investing at the age of 64, okay? much older than, than I. I actually began my career in real estate investing in my late 30s. I did in my late 30s. I, I read some books. I took some courses over the internet. Uh, I bought Carlton Sheets's course. I actually went through Carlton Sheets's course and I actually found it to be pretty informational. Um, there, there was good information in there, but the problem I had with his course 
was even though it was, it was chock full of great information, it was, in, in my opinion, and as somebody who purchased it and studied it, I felt it was very much lacking in the practical piece. So in other words, I was all armed and dangerous to buy my, my first property. And of course, this was a no money down system. And, and because I, was, I basically had no money to put down, this was the perfect system for me. But one of the things I didn't understand is that if you over leverage a property, it can be just as bad as not leveraging a par- property. Yeah. So what's this got to do with Bob? Well, it's got everything to do with Bob because Bob used leverage. And when we come back from the break, I'm going to break down a deal for you. Stick around. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. You allowed 15,000 members into your Thank sandbox. You. Thank yeah. you. And so that speaks volumes. So for that and as a fact. So you know why I did that? Everybody what? always asks, why did you do this? Because I was an ugly kid. My parents used to have to put a pork chop around my neck so the dog would play with me. And so I always wanted to have friends, and I figured if I could make people rich, they might be my friend. Join Dell and his successful friends. Start with the free online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Hey, it's Al Gordon being your host today, and we're talking about Bob. Now, Bob's not here today. Bob is doing the retirement thing, but Bob was here yesterday, and we had so much to cover with Bob, we just didn't get to it all. So what I'm doing today is I'm I'm giving you the rest of the story, and what we're going to do in this segment is we're going to talk about some of these deals that Bob got into. Now, when I started the show, I indicated to you that two of the three deals that Bob first invested in were, were excellent deals. The third deal was not a very good deal. It was not a very good deal. Let me, let me explain to you what I mean. In his very first deal, they purchased in June of 2013. They sold in August of 16. So they owned it for three years, two months approximately. They had a return of 242.4%. That means, that means if Bob had invested $100,000 into that deal, not only did he get his $100,000 back out of the deal, he got an additional $242,400 out of the deal. That was his, those were his combined returns between the cash flow and all the equity participations that are involved with the real estate deal. Yeah, we make money five different ways, technically six different ways if we're talking about multifamily, and that's what... Bob chooses to invest in is multifamily apartment communities. So he invested with somebody else and he got a great rate of return. The second deal that they got into, they bought into it in December of 2013. So it took him, took him about five more months to find his next deal, but he found it. And that particular property sold in February of 2016. So, so get this, he was only in that particular deal for two point two years. So he got into that deal after the first one and he got out of the deal before he got out of the first one. So you're probably wondering, well, well, how did they do? Why, Why did they sell so fast? Well, the reason they sold so fast was they were able to produce for Bob a 235.2% return on investment. You heard me correctly. If he had put $100,000 into that particular investment, he would have received his $100,000 back plus an additional $235,200 in all of the combined returns between the cash flows and between all the equity participations. Yeah, this is this is a great news story, right? And it, and it kind of sounds like, you know, Bob Bob has got this, this Midas touch, right? It's like whatever he touches, the deal goes swimmingly well. Okay. That held true for the first two deals. Now, let me tell you about deal number three, and let me answer some of my critics out there that, that tend to send me emails at askal at luinc.com. That's askal at luinc.com. If you send me a, a critical email, I'm going to read it. I, I'm interested in what you have to say. And, and one, of the, one of the critical emails that I have received from time to time is that, Al, you're always talking about success. You're always, you're always bringing these people on your show that seem to just be knocking it out of the park. And it's true. They, they seem to be knocking it out of the park. But that tends to be what goes on in the Lifestyles Unlimited community. 
Yeah, all, all these deals that we're talking about, it's not a one and done. These, these, are, these are just representations of what all the other people in Lifestyles Unlimited are, are receiving as far as rates of return. Okay, now here's the part where I'm going to answer my critics. I'm going to talk to you right now about deal number three. This was a 142-unit apartment community that Bob decided to invest in. He bought into this particular investment in December of 2013. In September of 2016, after almost three years, about 2.8 years of being in that particular property, they sold that property at a loss. Yeah, you heard me correctly, at a loss. Something went terribly wrong with this particular investment. I didn't get into the details as to the why, but here's what Bob and all the other investors in that particular investment decided after 2.8 years. The person that was orchestrating the deal wasn't doing as good of a job as they should have done. It's, it's, it's one of these cases where they took their eye off the ball. It happens. They're, you know, human beings are human beings. Not, not everybody is exceptional at what they do. And every once in a while, we might have somebody that decides they want to syndicate a real estate investment to their fellow Lifestyles Unlimited members. And, and when we do our due diligence on that person, everything seems to check out. Everything seems to be going well. Bob did all of his due diligence and he found that the person he was investing with, he, he thought this person had a great business plan, et cetera, et cetera. So he and other Lifestyles Unlimited members invested with this particular individual. Whatever happened on the property, not 100% sure. Again, I didn't get into the details because this is ancient history for Bob. But let me tell you what his return was on this investment. It was a negative 10.5% a negative 10.5%. Meaning, if he gave the investor $100,000, he invested $100,000 with that investor when this property sold, he essentially got about $90,000 back. He lost money. Now, I will tell you this. Rule number one in Lifestyles Unlimited is this. Don't lose money. Period. Don't lose money. Now, can, can you guarantee that you won't lose money when you get into a particular investment? The shorter answer is no, because you don't control the markets. You don't control what's going on. And if you're a passive investor, you're passive. You don't do any, any physical work on the property. That's not your role. Your role is to help capitalize the investment and then to make money off of the returns. Okay, so at the end of 2.8 years, they all decided that this asset was not going to work, that there was something fundamentally wrong with either the, the lead investor or the property or both or both, and they sold the property and they took a loss. Okay, that was the last time Bob ever took a loss. It was the last time he ever took a loss. And one of the things that Bob and I talked about um, during a commercial break, because we were talking about this particular deal, was why, why the loss? What, what happened? And, and he couldn't explain it. It, it was just one of these, these, these crazy things that happened. It's something you have to be prepared for. If you're a real estate investor, what he was he was thankful for is he didn't lose all of his money. He only lost about 10% of the money. And that loss was actually offset by the massive gains that he had on the other two properties. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, Bob went ahead, and he wasn't discouraged by this particular deal, and he, he got into a fourth real estate investment. He got into this particular deal in March of 2014, and they sold that property in December of 2017. So they held that particular property for about almost four years, 3.8 years. That particular asset returned a combined return of 141%. Okay, so Bob is back on track, okay? It, what it tells me when I'm looking at his entire investment portfolio here, everything that he's done as he's been a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, and that includes 35 different apartment community investments, some where he was the lead investor, but most where he was a passive investor with other leads. Because one of the things Bob figured out at the age of 64 was that he enjoyed this passive lifestyle. As a matter of fact, by investing in that fourth property, that was the catalyst for him to achieve full retirement. You heard me correctly. That was the catalyst for him to achieve full retirement. Because 
let me explain to you. I think Bob explained it yesterday, but let me tell you some more about Bob's work history. He worked 40 years as a project manager in the engineering and construction world. Yeah, project manager for 40 years. Okay, now if you, if you do the math, what? Most people get out of college around the age of what, 22? Okay, maybe they, they goof off for six months while they're looking for a job or something. Okay, so let's just, let's just assume that the age of 23, Bob went into the workforce and started doing this. At the age of 63, he essentially tried to retire himself, and he realized, uh-oh, this may not work. And that's part of the reason he came to Lifestyles Unlimited, because he was very concerned about running out of money in his later years. And because we talk about the power of passive income, the fact that you invest in assets that pay you monthly or quarterly, depending on the asset type, you use that money to offset your ordinary expenses of living. We're just going to keep talking about Bob because he's not here to defend himself. So we're just going to keep going for it. I'm not picking on you, Bob. Actually, we're, we're using all the content that you provided me to help share your story as well as educate the listeners, because there's there's a lot of great content here, Bob, and I appreciate you sharing it with me so that I can share it with our listening audience. So as we went to break, I mentioned to you that Bob, well, he found himself retired. It happened in May of 2014. This was like two months after he invested in that fourth real estate deal. Now, now keep in mind, keep in mind, at this point, he has four real estate investments as a passive investor. Three of these investments are doing really well. One of them is not doing very well at all. And as we find out over time, it actually wound up losing not a lot of money, but it did lose money. And that's that's a big no-no in Lifestyles Unlimited. We do not want to invest in anything that will affect our principal, period. Do not lose money. Do not lose money. Do not lose money. Can't make that strong enough. Do not lose money. How's that? Was that a better version? Okay. Let's get back to Bob. Bob finds himself retired at the age of, I don't know, 64-ish, right? 65-ish, whatever it is, okay? It really doesn't matter. He's in his 60s. He realizes he's not getting to where he's going to get to. He's, he's looking at a poison pill in his retirement accounts. He finds Lifestyles Unlimited. He listens to what we have to say. Same stuff I'm telling you, by the way. And he comes and checks us out, and he becomes a member. And he realizes that investing in multifamily is the way he needs to go. So he invests in four multifamily deals, and he finds out that with the passive income coming off of these deals, at least three of them, right, these, these, this extra income is what he needs to step away from corporate America. You heard me correctly, to step away from corporate America, to just say, that's it. I'm done with you guys. I, I'm never coming back. Don't call me. I'm I'm just I'm just done. Thank you for 40 years of great service. Yeah, 40 years of service in corporate America. There's no I'm I'm just wondering why, you know, Bob has such a good attitude in life, you know? He's well, I know why he's got a good attitude because he doesn't have to be in corporate America anymore. Okay. Bob gets the bug. Now he's he's in his his mid 60s and he does something that most people would never consider doing in their mid 60s. He decides that this passive investing, it's pretty cool, but it's boring. There's not a lot to do. So what does Bob do? Bob decides he's going to syndicate real estate assets. He's going to actually go out and find those assets. He's going to acquire those assets. He's going to bring other Lifestyles members into those assets as passive investors, in other words, to help capitalize the deal. And he's going to make great money for them. He's going to offer them a fiduciary obligation to provide great care of their money. And that's what he did. I don't know if that's what I would do when I get to the age of 64, but that's, that's kind of what Bob did. Or maybe he was 65 at the age. I think he was 65 when he did this. So at the age of 65, when the government says, you're supposed to be retired, right? Because that's, that's the current age of retirement for at least people kind of in my age group. Now, you younger people, I think that age of retirement has migrated up. It might be 66 or 67. So the government expects you to live longer and work an extra year or two more than they expected Bob and I to work. I'm just, just telling you the way the government sees it. Okay. So Bob, instead of enjoying retirement, he decides, I'm going back to work. He, he goes back to work. And he buys this 53-unit apartment community. Now, check this out. 
He bought this thing in December of 2014. He sold it in October of 2017. They owned it for less than three years. And here's what he did for the overall returns of that particular asset. 248.7% rate of return. Now, if you annualize that, he was basically providing 87.5% return on investment to his investors per year, per year. Yeah, let that sink in, per year. I know your financial planner says you should be getting like maybe 8.75% annually in, in the stock market, right? Except for right now, because I'm looking at a stock chart and it's not, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. But back in a time period when real estate was trying to, to recover, Bob goes into the lead investing world and he produces great returns. Now, he doesn't stop there. He does not stop there. As a matter of fact, he continues to invest passively. He picks up three more passive investments while he owns his first property. Then he gets this first property all stabilized and he decides, you know what? I'm going to go buy another one. So he goes out and he buys another property. This time, instead of small, like 53 units, he goes big. He picks up 182 units. He buys this thing in August of 2016. And he ultimately sold this property not too long ago. He sold it almost a year ago, back in November of 2021. Now get this. They owned that property for a little over five years. And this particular property produced a 312.9% rate of return over the lifespan of that investment. Now, he didn't do as well on this property as, if, as he did on the other one as far as annual returns. Okay, he didn't, he didn't hit that 87.5% annual rate of return. He was only able to eke out 51.4%. Yes, 51.4% annualized rate of return over a five-year period. Do, do you see what's going on here? See, Bob has been able to take his investors' money and double it and triple it in a finite amount of time. Three years on the first deal, five years on the second deal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is what Bob did in retirement. You know why he did it? Because he enjoys it. He's actually really good at this stuff. He took a 40-year career in engineering and construction, and he, and he was easily translated that into being a lead investor because he had 99% of the salient skill sets. Now, here's, here's something I'm going to share with you about Bob. He sent me a text, and he said, Hey, Al, I really had a good time. By the way, if, if you and Jonathan, meaning my son, would like to sit down with Janine and I, uh, his daughter, because uh, we, we talked about the legacy thing, right? Well, that's one of the things I was talking to, to Bob about during the commercial breaks. I was saying, look, Bob, you know, John and I are looking to do something very similar to what you and Janine have done. Would you be willing to sit down with us, have dinner with us, have lunch with us one day, and we can just sit down and kind of hash through some of the things that maybe we're not thinking about that, you know, you have lessons learned on that you can share with us? And he's like, I would be glad to. I would be glad to. And 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 here's... Here's the thing about Bob that may or may not have come across yesterday on the show. I think it came across, but maybe for some of you, you missed it. Bob is one of these guys that will help other people. You heard me correctly. He will help other people. As a matter of fact, he believes in that so much. It's at the foundation of what he does for his real estate investing business. He is so excited when he can help other people, such as his residents. He, he loves helping his residents. What, how does he help them? By improving their lives with a higher quality of living because he's giving them a better living condition than they can find in the marketplace for the amount of rent they're willing to spend. He, he, helps his community by improving and maintaining the properties that he's acquired. And he's improved the neighborhoods where all of these apartment communities are located. These are now no longer the ugliest things in the neighborhood. They're now some of the nicest things in the neighborhood. He's been able to help our children. Well, his children, I should say, by mentoring them on the benefits of real estate investing and providing them a path to financial independence. That's what he's done for Janine. I tell you what, Janine is like knocked it out of the park. She, 
She listened to what dad had to say. She started up a management company for dad. And, and then she became a lead investor. She actually has four apartment communities that she owns and operates as a lead investor because Bob helped her understand the process and then helped her out the entire way. And I will tell you this about Janine. She's an outstanding investor and an even more outstanding real estate operator. She knows how to run her properties. And then finally, Bob helps other people in the form of his his investors, the people that, that trust him because he provides them quarterly cash flow and equity gains that have helped them to achieve their financial goals. See, that's what this is all about at Lifestyles Unlimited. This is all about helping you to understand, number one, there's a much better way to do this than what you're doing right now. Number two, we want you to understand that you need to stop relying on the 401k, the IRA, all, all those crazy government-controlled retirement programs, because here's the thing, the people that put all the legislation together to, to create those programs, well, none of those people were retired. They don't know what they're creating. They have no idea what they're creating. Yeah, all they're creating is something that meets the requirements of something or some other thing. For instance, the 401k. The 401k. You know why the 401k came into existence? Because in 1978, corporate America was trying to figure out how they could get rid of the pensions without losing the workforce. And in 1978, legislation was published in Section 401k of, of United States law that, that allowed for some provisions to do what you do in your 401k. And by 1980, corporate America had figured that dog out and they had divested themselves from pensions and they had moved everybody they could into 401ks. And here's the exact reason why. They divested their responsibility to support you in retirement. They put the monkey on your back. It's on your back. They have no control. We want you to have control. Bob wants you to have control. We want you to become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. What you need to do right now is go to lifestylesunlimited.com and get signed up for a free workshop. And let's get you going. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.